Now, is this the greatest game of all time? I, I will say this. I think this may be the greatest game of all time for the Detroit Lions franchise. I think this is bigger than when uh, Barry Sanders like uh, just went all out of his mind against Dallas in 1991. 90, 90, yeah. And um, I, that game was huge. But you, the 90s is somehow, I mean, it's just math, right? The 90s is certainly closer to the 50s than the aughts are to the 50s or the 20s are to the 50s. So that 30, that gap, that over 30 year gap is huge. And the fact that if you were a young, when I was a young kid, we still hung our hats on, well, we won the 1957 championship, you, you know what I mean? But you can't do that in the 20s. Yeah. Not, not in this new, it's, it was just too long of a drought and too significant of a drought. There was, this was so harrowing, I thought to myself, okay, after the previous season, after beating Green Bay, first of all, a, winning a divisional game in Lambeau against Aaron Rodgers, uh, ending on a pick. It was, it was, the hope was so high. You could, you could taste it. And then I was deflated when I saw the schedule come out. I go, what? It's us. We've got to play KC yeah. in Arrowhead. Yeah. And I thought to myself, maybe I, I afforded myself just a small hint of hope. I mean, I believe in Dan. I believe in Brad Holmes, our general manager. I think we can win this game. The fact that they came out with the victory, it, I think this it is such a marked change in the culture of Detroit football. Those games that we would lose, those games that when we get into overtime, they're going, oh, they're just going to march down the field and get a field goal and win. Those games where you're like, all we need to do is stop them here. You know, the, yeah. Detroit's big, one of our big signature things was always, it's like 232 in the fourth quarter. You're like, well, we're gonna, they're just going to get whatever first down they need, and the team would always get the first down. Four-minute offense. Four-minute offense, and we'd always collapse. Always. And they would just seal the deal. And I, I, this game this game is going to be one of the most important games, if not the most important game, in the annals of Detroit Lions football history because of seeing this blueprint in action, seeing the culture literally change. I, we I, needed this win. I, 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 can, I can see that. I don't think you're crazy for saying that. Mm -hmm. Like, that is going out and beating the defending Super Bowl champs after playing your best football at the end of, this, at the, end of the year. Yep, yep, yep. After a rough, rough start. You know, the end of the year, they, they were playing really good ball. Really and good to, ball. To go out and then we'll, get, we'll dive into the game, but to, 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 to go out and – beat the, the defending champs on a platform where everyone is watching that gives your team confidence and to do it, it that that's like a that's like a switch that like guys a hey, we believe actually what we're we're preaching here now that's right. a, that's a confirmation on everything that the coaches were saying from that point on after the season you know after the great uh, ending of their season that right there everything that they were you know preaching to have that come out and, and start the season the way they did, that was that's that. I mean, I don't think you're crazy for saying that. No, I I, I appreciate it. I, I, it says it says so much about the direction that the team was going in. No, yeah. and and I remember, I mean, I was jazzed when we were on Hard Knocks, and I, I thought that HBO made a really good choice. That that was the right time to do it. We were the right time to pick. It's like pick a team when it looks like there's going to be a, a significant culture change. Yeah, and I, I want to give a lot of credit. To Sheila Hamp, uh, to Sheila Ford Hamp, who's our who's our team owner, who um and and also to Mrs. Ford, who is our team owner emeritus, you, you know, um Sheila, I thought Sheila took a very big swing, a very courageous, big, and I thought it was a shrewd and a smart swing when she got Matt Patricia. I I could see that in her mind, she's going, let's go somebody with somebody who's been in a culture. In a winning culture for a long, a person you know very well, yeah. who's been in a culture for a very long time, I I think he might be able to make the shift. She made the the thinking was right. Yeah, the thinking was right. So I thought I I was really I started feeling hopeful when Sheila kind of took over the reins for her mom. Um, uh, Martha is a passionate football person. She loves her team. She loves the staff. Uh, I think it was right for her to kind of go. I'm going to give the reins over to my daughter. I think she's got good ideas. I think she's moving in the right direction. Yeah. So I, I have to give her kudos for that Matt Patricia hire. And and then, um, you know, I think that Dan, unless you're in the league or a real huge sports maven, Dan was an, not, a, not a completely unproven quantity because I thought he did really good stuff in Miami. Yeah. And, um, but he, he, 
he again was the right choice. She just went swinging for the fences again. The shrewd choice was Brad Holmes. Yeah. I, I, it was so funny. I, I, I go, oh, I think this guy might be the, this might be the piece. So somebody who's, whose career was, has been spent scouting. Yeah. Scouting, scouting, scouting. And for him to say, we're going to build this team through the draft, it's just balls. It takes balls. I'm, we're not going to spend a ton of money. We're going to be, the word is shrewd. We're going to be shrewd. And we're going to make, make informed choices to build a future for this team. That's another thing I love about our team. Yeah. Is that we're building a team that could be good for a decade. It's not, let's go try to win a Super Bowl in one year, let's spend all of our money, bankrupt ourselves, yeah. go for it. What if you don't win? What if you don't get the Stan Kroenke? What if you don't get the Stafford effect and you don't win the Super Bowl? And then and then what happens? Yeah. Then no. what happens? So I, I just shout out to Sheila Hamp. It, yeah. They've definitely gone foundational. Foundational. This is you absolutely know, and it and it and that starts from the leader. And you know, I'll get into more of the lines and where I believe in them when we'll get in there, but you know, MCDC is a great fit for that city. Mm -hmm. I mean, the toughness and, and you know, to, to show what he's shown, you know, everyone kind of thought he was just a big old meathead. But, you know, the guy, the guy knows football. They didn't know, and they, he knows football. They didn't know what he meant. I don't think they knew what he meant when he said grit. Yeah. Because when he says grit, I think part of grit is also mental fortitude. Not just testicular fortitude, yeah. but but mental, cerebral fortitude. Yeah. It's both. It's like you said, people thought he was a meathead and he's, you know, he got the passion, got the best of him and he said the kneecaps thing and blah, 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 blah. It's the mental fortitude. On Hard Knocks, he did that thing where he shook out the jeans, the dust out of the, the clothes and said, we've got to get this off. We're not that team. Be, just because you're here in Allen Park, Michigan, in this training facility, let it, you got to let all that go at the door. We're not, we're different. We're, it's, it's been amazing to watch. It is. That it's, that, that the culture and the philosophy is actually working. Yeah. It, it, it is.